everybody and welcome back to a new reading vlog. If you're new here, hi, my name's Leora and I talk on here about books, writing, reading, lots of things. And right now you're watching another one of my reading vlogs. I'm in the middle of a very highly anticipated read right now. I think some of you can already guess what it is. And I felt like sharing some bits of my life in autumn because I just really enjoy making footage of like all the leaves falling down and the weather changing and you know, <laughs> I just felt like that is something that needs to be shared. Hi everybody, before we get into the rest of this reading vlog, I want to say a quick thank you to our friends over at Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. As most of you may know by now, now, Book of the Month is a super popular and fast growing online book service for readers like you and me. Their mission is to promote new and emerging authors and help readers choose the books that they love. So their team goes through hundreds of books each month and then makes a curated selection. And these are mostly new and early release titles, which is really great because this way you get to discover some new reads without having to do the research yourself. And next to that, Book of the Month is also risk free. You can skip any month, any time and not be charged. So if you're based in the US or Canada, this is definitely a book subscription service you should check out. And on top of all that, they also have the best price for new release hardcover fiction. In fact, you can get your first book for only $9.99 using my code LEORA. <laughs> So this month they had a bunch of amazing picks, but I got to pick one of these month's add-ons and then also a backlist add-on because with Book of the Month, you can also always choose from their add-ons, which is amazing because they have a lot, lot, lot of backlist books that you can pick and read. So let me talk to you about these two books. So this is one of the new recent add-ons. This is The Cloisters by Katie Hayes. This is about a group of researchers in a museum in New York and they are discovering a mystery surrounding this old occult tarot deck. And I feel like it also has some magical dark academia vibes so that sounds absolutely amazing and the cover is stunning then this book i am very hyped about this is practical magic by ellis hoffman the classic story of the owen sisters who are witches the movie is legendary and i'm obsessed with it so i can't wait to dive into this book so don't forget to head on over to bookofthemonth.com and use my code leora to get your first book for only $9.99 Thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring my videos and enabling me to keep creating content on here. And yeah, let's get back to the video. So my current read is Babel and Arcane History by Erif Kwong. This was highly anticipated by me because it seemed a very interesting read filled with lots of critical thinking and it also has the dark academia magical vibes. So that was just like everything I want in a read. I've heard very mixed reviews from people around me. There's friends of me that thought it was absolutely amazing and there's friends of me that didn't like it as much but that was mostly I think because it was a lot different than they expected. Like this novel is not purely aesthetic, it's also really going into some difficult topics. So I've made quite some progress in it already actually. I'm on page 238. I've not been reading as much in the last few days because this is like not the kind of read you constantly want to pick up before you go to bed because it's quite like heavy sometimes. So I feel like I need to maybe find like a more cozy read to balance it off with. So in this book we follow Robin who's an orphan and he gets adopted by this sort of weird English professor. He gets adopted from China and the professor raises him in England and then sends him off to Babel which is a sort of arcane academy for language and translation but also magic. Because in this world there's a very interesting magic system that is very closely connected Connected with language and this is honestly one of the most intriguing magic systems I've ever read about in books. It's so original like I've never read anything like it and I've definitely read my fair share of fantasy novels. So as Robin ventures more and more into the Oxford lifestyle and the Babel lifestyle he discovers that a lot of what the British Empire is doing with this magic is just colonialism and he's actually a product of it in a very weird twisted way. And so sort of where he comes from strongly opposes where he is now and also he wants to belong but he also also wants to do what's right so there's a very big ethical conflict within him as well and then there's also just lots and lots of racism in this book that he's dealing with and he's figuring out his own identity and where he is in the midst of all this. I think this novel is really exploring like systems and institutes and how they actually help horrible systems and like help holding things in place that are not always necessarily good. It's complicated. I feel like I'm not doing a good job explaining. The Empire is using all the languages of other countries to sort of better themselves and to use that power from themselves and this is a sort of structure that feels unethical and wrong and unfair. Then next to all of that there's also the friend group and the people in this novel and I just I care for them a lot. I love like sort of the friendship dynamics and the studying together and the learning of magic. That is also just because I love a school setting. Like 
give me a magical boarding school. I'm all in. So I've not read anything else by Arif Kwong, but I do own the entire Poppy Ma trilogy. <laughs> I know, I know. So I am definitely sort of feeling myself getting motivated to pick that up as well after I finish this, because I do think it's really good. Things are kind of going wrong in the story right now, and there's already some things I have figured out that I feel like the main character is not figuring out yet. And I just keep being like, Robin, this is so obvious to me. Why is it not to you? <laughs> And the tensions between the friends are also definitely rising because they all come from such different backgrounds. And before that wasn't as big of an issue, but now it's getting more and more of an issue as they grow up and have to make other choices and like sort of choices that actually define their life and who they are and what they age. So it's getting really interesting right now. Everybody. So today I just filmed a few tidbits. I was packaging orders. I went to the post office, but my local post office seems to have gone out of business literally in a few days. Like, I mean, it probably was coming, but I had no idea. So I walked there with my mail and it was like, oh, 
<laughs> it's not open but I did have a nice autumnal walk and I've also been doing quite some reading but before I give you a reading update into Babel I want to talk about some bookish mail I just got I'm not sure like what my planning is if I'm going to put um, this sponsorship in this particular video but this is my book of the month package if you're a subscriber you get like the beautiful blue box uh, so don't worry about that but I picked some really really extra exciting books this month from book of the month so I can't wait to show you guys and if the sponsorship is in this video then you maybe already have seen it but yeah I'm, I'm sorry <laughs> I'm just excited so I am sharing it again it is so beautiful okay so for those of you who don't know I work with book of the month which is always very exciting you can refer to the sponsorship bit in this video or in my previous video or some of my other videos if you want to know more about them and their brand because they're really really lovely and very nice to work with as well I usually pick around two books Books, and usually that's just like one of the new add-ons um, or it's one of their selection and if you're a subscriber to book of the month you can pick one book and you can always add an add-on of course the usual subscription is one book so the book that i picked this month is the cloisters by katie hayes because this cover just totally got me like look how stunning that is absolutely stunning and what i know of this is that it's sort of dark academia but it's set in a museum and it's got something to do with like an old tarot deck and a researcher who's researching the deck so it's like occult and that just sounds absolutely amazing i'm so excited to finally dive into this one it's not too big either so might actually start soon very exciting but then the other book i picked is one of their add-ons and i'm beyond excited for this one because it's practical magic by ellis hoffman as you know if you've been following me for a bit i'm a huge fan of practical magic the movie and i've always wanted to read the book but it's so hard to get your hands on i don't know why especially in my country it's like really difficult and i'm still not sure why so i got it from book of the month and this is the special edition cover i think uh because like the boots it's not the regular cover so stunning i cannot wait i'm so excited so this is about the owens women and they've been cursed and in this book we follow sally and jillian owens and they live in a small town and basically they've always been bullied because they're witchy and their aunts are witches and it's just the story of these two sisters and their witchcraft and i'm just so excited i don't want to spoil it for you but the movie is also amazing can't wait to dive into this one so that was a little book mail I hope you guys didn't mind. I'm just really excited about both of these books. Then now it's time for my Babel update. I do have to say the story is sort of getting more and more painful as we look into Robin's history and his connection to his family and maybe even his biological family and how painful that is and also all the racism that they're enduring. It's just it's definitely hard to read but it's a very important book and it did give me a lot more insight on colonial times and it's really interesting to see it from a point of view of somebody who's sort of born in between because Robin doesn't feel fully Chinese but he doesn't feel fully British either because like he'll never be accepted and it's always so conditional and he feels so conflicted between the two countries. It's just all horribly unfair. The tension between all of the characters and Robin's inner conflict is definitely building. There's also been some mysterious deaths of students going on and they're sort of trying to figure out what is going on. I do have to say Professor Lavelle, or I don't know how you pronounce it, but I think Lavelle is one of the most horrid characters I've ever read about. It's just like, okay, well not I mean, I've read about a bunch of horrid characters before, but he's like, I just, I dislike him with a, such a deep passion. <laughs> I just feel hatred for this man. As I read on in this novel, I just keep being more and more impressed with Aerith Kwong's ability to build such a big world with such an interesting magic system and the way she ties the sort of political views and colonial struggles into the magic system and the distribution of wealth across the world. It's a debate that's still very necessary, unfortunately, but that makes it sort of all the more real, even though it is a fantasy novel. And I just think this is such a valuable work of fiction. As you all know, I love a good light fluffy read. This is not that. But the thing is, it does have its little moments of joy, which are also so good. Like, Aerith Kwong can write it all. She can do the hard parts, but she's also really, really good at the nice parts. Like, when the friends are, like, close and they're, like, in between difficult weeks of studying and they have, like, some time off and they gallivant around the city and spend time together and they love each other so much, even though tensions are rising. And it's just... Ah, oh, so nice. So it's a grand mix of all sorts of things, but definitely a good book. I'll be sure to catch up with you guys in the morning or maybe somewhere in the next few days to talk about my books and everything else.
everybody, I'm here to close off this vlog and also give you a final reading update. I am almost at the end of it now. Things are unraveling, lots of things are happening, characters are dying, there's gruesome murders left and right. They were on a voyage across the seas as well. I won't spoil anything like where they went and stuff like that. But I will say that that journey definitely made a lot of things happen, like set a lot of things into motion. I do have to say, I think this is a really, really good book. But like I said before, if you're not looking for like a more heavy hitting fantasy that I wouldn't recommend it. But if you're looking for something with a very original magic system and something that is full of critical thinking and that really challenges you to look at your own worldview, then I would definitely recommend it. And what also happened whilst I was reading this book is that I became so aware of language because of the magic system in this novel, because it's so based upon language and like language meanings. So to try to explain it very briefly, it's basically the silver bars that are engraved on both sides. This is like not a spoiler, it's more sort of like explaining of the magic system and what they do they pick a word from one language for the one side and a word from another language on the other side the meaning that is lost between these two words because all languages are a bit different even though things derive from the same originals like the same base language sometimes there's still some meaning lost every now and then and that meaning can turn into magic and these silver bars are then sort of used in society to, for example make carts drive themselves and to make gardens feel peaceful, like all sorts of different things. There's a very unfair and uneven distribution of this magic across the world, even though they are using languages from other countries to make this magic happen. But that really made me think about like how all language comes from something which is so interesting so from a linguistic perspective this is really good as well and it just made me think of those words in Dutch that are kind of untranslatable and that you could use like for this magic system so like the word gezellig for example which sort of means cozy but also with friends and like surrounded by people like oh, there's just not a good word for it in English and the same for the word toevluchtsort which is one of my favorites that sort of means like a place to run to but also some place that feels like home and maybe a place that's sort of like heaven or, like a safe haven and it's like there's just not a word in English that can explain it well enough. So that's really, really interesting. So I think that's my final say on Bubble for right now. Of course, I will involve it when I do my recent reads or like a wrap up or something. I'm planning on doing a favorite recent reads and then also an October wrap up to focus more on my like my October reads. So there's lots of exciting videos coming. So definitely subscribe and stay tuned. I want to thank you all so much for watching my channel. I've been getting lots of support recently, which is making me really happy. So leave some cute full leaf emojis if you don't know what to comment. And otherwise, let me know in the comments what you're reading and whether you enjoyed the video. And I'll see all of you in my next one. Thank you so much for watching. Bye, guys.